lighter, stiffer, and with revised geometry. The 2023 Scott Scale RCSL has everything to get a racer's heart pounding. I've managed to spend some time riding the scale before this launch to get some first ride impressions. And in this video, I'm going to run you through all the key changes and how this affects the bike out on the trail. But before I get into the details, here are the top four things you need to know about the new Scott scale. Number one, this 2023 update is lower, slacker and longer. Zero surprises there. Number two, the head tube angle is 67.9 degrees and thanks to an angle adjust headset can be raked out to 67.3. Number three, Scott says that the weight across all carbon frame scales has been reduced. And number four, that doesn't mean weight loss was the main focus. Balancing stiffness, strength and compliance were vital in an attempt to improve marginal gains. Let's start by looking at those geometry changes. Sure, it's longer, lower and slacker, but what does that mean exactly? Scott says these changes have been made to make the scale more competitive on a range of course types. The 2023 refinement focused update includes a 67.9 degree head tube angle that, thanks to an angle adjust headset, can be raked out by 0.6 degrees to 67.3. And there's a relatively steep 75.4 degree seat tube angle. Altering that head tube angle is aimed at providing more aggressive handling while descending. Reach figures span from 418.5 millimeters for the size small up to 491.2 for the extra large. Top tube lengths start at 575 millimeters and lift to 656.5. I've been riding a size large, which has a 463.6 mm reach and a 626 mm top tube. Elsewhere, there's a 425 mm chainstay, which is the same across all sizes, and a 1158 mm wheelbase. The bottom bracket sits at a low 313 mm with a 62 mm drop beneath the axles. While these figures are certainly modernised from the outgoing scale, are still very representative of the numbers used at the sharp end of cross-country marathon racing. While the previous generation scale used HMX carbon, the new bike gets an even fancier sounding HMX SL material. This uses T1000G carbon fibre, which is claimed to be the world's highest tensile strength fibre, and is laid using a carbon nanotube reinforced epoxy resin. The gist of this is the scales frame is made from much less material because the material used is stronger and stiffer. This saves weight without making compromises elsewhere. The scales front end is made from one single laid up section of carbon where only one mold is used. This means there are fewer sections or pieces of frame that need to be bonded together, creating fewer junctions to use Scott's terminology. In total, the scale RC is made from three sections of carbon, where the other two are found in the rear triangle. Two of the world's finest cross-country racers are on Scott's XC team roster, namely Nino Scherter and Kate Courtney. Between them, they've won more races than I've had hot dinners. So we're not surprised at all to see the new scale RC SL coming in at just 8.93 kilos for a size large without pedals. Scott claims that HMX SL scale's medium size frame weighs 847 grams. And this is seriously impressive given that that figure includes all of the hardware. But if you go for one of the more sensibly priced models, you'll be stepping down to the HMX and HMF versions of the frame which are 912 grams and 1,013 grams respectively. The feathery weight should really help the bike to climb and it will, as ever, be interesting to see which courses the pros choose this bike over the full sus Spark RC. Contributing to the bike's weight are the parts that hang from the frame. So let's take a look at the bling-tastic components on my top end test bike. At the front end, you'll find Fox's 32 Stepcast Float Factory Fork. This is fitted with the Fit4 damper with low speed compression and rebound damping adjustment, along with a three position remote lockout adjuster, which is called Ride Lock 2 and is made by Scott. Pivoting on a Synchro's angle adjust headset, it features a port for internal cable routing, 
with space for a brake hose, dropper post and derailleur cable. Although this model only makes use of the rear brake hose routing. It's a very tidy setup indeed. The brakes are supplied by Germany's Trickstuff. The Piccola carbon stoppers have carbon fiber blades which control, and apologies to any of our German listeners for my pronunciation, Dakla ultra light two piston calipers. A 180 mm rotor features up front and a 160 mm on the rear. The access rear derailleur controller and ride lock two remote mount to the trick stuff brakes using a matchmaker adapter. Drivetrain duties are taken care of by SRAM's XX1 Eagle Access group set, which includes a quark chainring power meter. Synchro's mightily impressive Silverton SL230CL carbon fiber one piece wheels see the spokes, rims, and hubs constructed from a single piece of material. They're wrapped in Maxxis's Recon Race 29 by 2.4 inch XO tires front and rear, and you'll even find a Quark tire whiz providing wireless pressure monitoring. Scott Synchro's one piece Fraser ICSL XC carbon fiber stem and bar is fitted. These are 740 millimeters wide, have a minus 12 degree rise and an eight degree sweep. Scott keeps the weight down with a top end carbon Synchros Duncan seat post and Bellicara SL saddle. If you're thinking that all of this will cost a lot, then you're right. Our build here will set you back a pound or euro shy of 14 grand. Ouch. I had a limited amount of time on the scale ahead of the launch but managed to ride on my home trails in Scotland's Tweed Valley, riding routes that are potentially going to be used for the upcoming 2023 Cross Country Marathon World Championships. I also managed to spend some time on the bike on the trails I rode in my youth down in Dorset, riding flat out bridleways in the rolling countryside and tight twisty trails in a local forest. Point the scale uphill and it's brutally fast and efficient. Rider inputs are quickly and precisely and rewardingly converted into forward motion. Reaching top speeds on smoother undulating terrain requires a remarkably small amount of effort and the highest cassette sprockets are the most frequently used. The rewarding relationship between effort and speed eggs you on to ride faster and pedal harder. However, that super efficient feel isn't accompanied by a harsh and bone rattling ride. Although the low bars create a front bias weight distribution, the shorter chain stays means the back is never far away from your center of mass. This sets you in an aggressive riding position, which helps to spread your weight evenly across the bike chassis and wheels, where front wheel lift or rear wheel spin need to be intentionally initiated. What goes up must come down. And despite Scott's attempts to dull the razor sharp cross country focused edge of the scale, it still lands itself squarely in the seat up, bar down, aggressive cross country domain. But by no means is that a bad thing. Hauling down long, fast, but not hugely technical descents, such as those found on XC Marathon racetracks, the scale is totally at home. That smooth, grip rich ride on the ascents is ever present on the descents where bumps and trail chatter are successfully numbed by the bike. Speed is easily accessible on less techy trails, and the pace the scale is comfortable rumbling along at is hugely impressive. This makes it an awesomely fun bike to ride, where the higher the velocity, the more exhilarating and rewarding it is to ride. Fast rolling tires double down on that acceleration, but this is at the detriment of some traction in soft and sticky mud. Despite the control afforded by the hand to feet relationship, it does have its limits. Tackling black graded trail center descents shows a more nervous side to the scale. Multiple factors contribute to this, the biggest of which is the saddle height and lack of dropper post. Riding down small drops or steps, the high saddle tends to kick up, contacting your backside. This can pitch your weight further onto the already low slung front end because the bike is unable to move about beneath your body without contacting it. Some would argue a dropper post is incongruous with the bike's lightweight persona, but in terms of how much extra value it would add to the ride, I'd personally take the weight penalty. Unfortunately, not a single model in the new scale range is specced with a dropper post from the factory. So if you're looking for that added performance, an aftermarket upgrade will be required for more cash. 
There you have it. Those are my initial thoughts on the brand new Scott scale. But what are yours? Is this a bike you want to add to your stable? Let me know in the comments. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the full video review. In the meantime, if you're looking for even more cross-country content, then start with this video.